No organization has yet claimed responsibility of the attack that happened earlier in the day in Dolmabahce Palace, which is just behind me. Uh, there is a, police have allowed traffic, uh, and life is back to normal in that sense, but no pedestrians are allowed and investigation is still carried on. There is police presence here and there are special forces investigating and controlling the area as well. As I said, uh, no organization has yet claimed responsibility, but considering Turkey has launched what it says, a synchronized war against terror on several fronts since last month, it could be either the Kurdish militant group PKK behind this attack, or it could be the radical one of the radical leftist organizations, or it could even be the IS. IS has not yet uh, launched, conducted uh, serious attacks on Turkish soil since these operations have started. But as recent as yesterday, uh, Turkish members of the group uh, allegedly uh, were in a video message th threatening uh, the Turkish government, saying we will conquer Istanbul, hinting that uh, attacks in Istanbul could take place. So this was the Istanbul part of the story. But in the southeast of Turkey, another attack took place today, which was much more serious. At least eight soldiers were killed in this bomb attack. And Turkey has been seeing a wave of violence since last month, since the operations started against these groups. Uh, and times are very tense in Turkey at the moment. Well, with me here in the studio is Charl Kasapoglu of the BBC Turkey Service. Uh, we're just hearing there uh, Selin talking about all the tensions and, and we've been reporting about uh, this attack in the southeast of the country where eight soldiers have been killed. Yes, uh, eight soldiers killed in a bomb attack in Sirt, southeastern part of Turkey, which is a Kurdish-dominated area. And this comes as the last of a series of attacks against the security forces in Turkey. And the initial uh, attack has started actually in mid-July, when Turkey has launched two fronts and several fronts uh, operation against both the IS, Islamic State, PKK, and also there was a, a operation against the radical leftists as well. So what we see now in eastern, southeastern part of Turkey is an escalation of tension and it is a sign of obvious uh, ceasefire which only endured two years uh, has come to an end with the Kurds in Turkey. Uh, this has come uh, at a time where there's a lot of political turmoil in the country as well and, and people are likely to go back to the polls. Exactly. So the general elections which took place in June, uh, came. the results came as a surprise for the ruling AK party uh, and the president Erdogan himself because they were expecting to secure an absolute majority to change the constitution and to change it in favor of a new presidential system in Turkey. But the pro-Kurdish parties, uh, HDPs, uh, exceeding the threshold and becoming a uh, member of the parliament as a party has changed the plans and now uh, the coalition talks also failed which means that even today President Erdogan said that Turkey is rapidly heading to a new election which which could take in a couple of months time and this is a political aspect of the tension now going in Turkey but on the ground in the eastern part of Turkey the clashes every day we hear new clashes and new uh, attacks against the security forces. Forces. 